Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to be breaking out the sawmill again and testing this out on some larger logs that I've got here. This will cut up to a 26 inch log and I've got a few logs that are pretty much 26 inches or a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna be testing this out. Now the problem with a log this size, I cannot lift that with my tractor. And so we're gonna to have to figure out a different way to get it up onto the sawmill. So after we level this out, we're gonna end up building some ramps using some wood, sort of roll that log up on top of the sawmill. The first step of this is just making sure that the sawmill is level uh, and it's not tilted on any of the corners. We're on quite a bit of a hill here, which will actually help us when we have to build those ramps. It's not gonna be as steep to roll up on top of that sawmill. So it's gonna work in our favor once we get this all set up. Here's the ramp that we're gonna be using. We've got two four x fours that we're gonna use as the runners to roll the log up onto. And then we are gonna be building a support in the middle just to ensure that that four x four will be able to support all the weight that it needs to. All right, so we're ready to start rolling this up onto the sawmill. And this is the first one that we're testing this out with and we did also pick the biggest one. This also isn't very round. The other logs are a lot more round and roll right up the ramp a lot easier. So we had quite the time getting this one up onto the sawmill starting out, but then the other ones went a lot smoother. This definitely wouldn't be possible if I were just by myself. So I wanna to try to figure out a way that I can get these logs up onto the trailer without using a big piece of equipment in order to do it. So I'm gonna be testing things out and trying to figure out how to get large logs like this up onto the trailer a little bit easier. Now, once we got it up to this point, right as it reached the sawmill, you can use those runners to tip it back onto the sawmill. And you'll wanna make sure you have your log stops set at the highest they can go just then that log doesn't roll off the other side and end up falling off of the trailer. Now the hard part's finished. All we need to do now is be able to turn that log after we make a few cuts and I'll show you guys how we're gonna do that in just a minute. Now before I start cutting into this, we did drag this log across the ground and there's quite a bit of clay that's stuck to the bark. So we're gonna clean that off really quick and make sure that this is uh, not gonna dull the blade right away if we're cutting through that dirt. Now we're gonna need to rotate the log and this is the next hard part that we're gonna have to figure out. We try a few different things, but we just can't budge this log without having some good leverage. I don't have a log cant or a PB. I'm gonna plan on getting some of those soon so that I can rotate these logs a lot easier. But what I do have is a good digging bar and a chain. And what I'm gonna do is wrap that chain around the log and all you have to do is leave a little bit of slack in that chain and stick that digging bar through and sort of twist it around the chain and it will grip onto that log. And you can use that as leverage to rotate this. And you can see just myself alone was able to roll that log and we can easily maneuver that around once you have enough leverage.
All right, so here comes round two. We've got the ramp set up now, goes a lot quicker the second time around, and the log is a lot easier to get up there. It's nice and round. And before we start rolling up the ramp, we also decided to scrape off all the bark, which has all the dirt and clay from dragging it through the woods. So now it's a nice clean log ready to mill on the mill, and hopefully that won't dull the blade at quite as fast as having dirt on the bark. Now that log was a lot easier, it's much longer than the previous one and it's still pretty big but it was nice and round and rolled up the ramp really easily. So we're going to go ahead and start milling this one and I'll speed that up for you guys so you can see how it works. Now a trick that helps a lot is cutting off any of the knots or knobs that stick out on these logs. It helps rolling a lot easier and even the mill goes past them. If those knobs stick out past 26 inches, you won't be able to get this thing over the log. And so cutting those off beforehand before you get it up on the mill is the easiest way to do it. Now I'm sure there's a right and a wrong way to mill these logs, but what I'm trying to do here is get the log to a square as fast as possible so I get as many square boards, which is most usable for me, as possible. And I don't mind a few nice live edge pieces of wood, so I'm going to be keeping uh, these scraps as well. The first cut I'll use for firewood, the second cut possibly use for a live edge, but as soon as I get to that corner right there, I'm going to rotate the log to get to the third side. I'll take a few passes on this until I get to a square edge and then rotate it one last time. And that's the finished board width that I'm going to be getting and I'll cut all the way down to the bottom. And then I believe at the last four inches I'll rotate it once more standing up on the end and I'll get a few 2x4s out of that. All right, so this is the last log we're gonna be cutting up today. All four of these were from the same tree. This was an old gum tree on our property. I was really glad to get rid of this because these trees drop these really annoying spiky balls all over your yard and they kill the grass and it makes a huge mess. So I was happy to get rid of it, but I'm really excited about turning it into usable lumber. This wood is absolutely beautiful. It's got a really dark center to it, which the outside is a lot lighter. Now I haven't used this wood before, but what I could tell online, it seems like this used to be used a lot more in construction as well as woodworking a long time ago. Now one thing about milling your own lumber is it takes a long time for it to dry, for it to be actually useful. So I'm gonna plan to stack this up somewhere on our property and have it covered up for over six months to a year and see how well it dries out. So here's all the lumber that I have just from those four logs that we cut today. It is a ton of wood. I don't know how I'm ever going to use all of this up. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next one.